Everyone in the world has gone to bed one night or another with fear or pain or loss or disappointment. And yet each of us has awakened, arisen, uh, somehow made our ablution, seen other human beings and said, morning, how are you? Fine, thanks in you. It's amazing, wherever that abides in the human being, there is the nobleness of the human spirit, despite it all, black and white. Asian, Spanish, Native American, pretty, plain, thin, fat, vowed or celibate, we rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just because I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons with the certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes. Shoulders falling down like teardrops. Weakened by my soulful cries. Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Does my sexiness offend you? Oh, does it come as a surprise that I dance? as if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, there I go rising. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. <sighs> Actually, I really should, could just go sit down after that. There's not much more that I could possibly say after hearing Maya do that, and as only Maya Angelou could do. Amen? Huh. I'm out of practice. <laughs> Let's pray. Holy One, we are so grateful for the opportunity to be before you today. We are so thankful that you are our hope, that you have built in each one of us the ability to rise, to rise above adversity, to rise above when so many things can come against us. But when we put our trust and our hope in you, that you have created us, that you love us, within us and with your help, we rise. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So where does our hope come from? In today's scripture, you heard from Psalm 71. The writer of the psalm has written this, this particular psalm as a prayer of a lifelong protection and help. Now, this psalm actually was 24 verses long. Aren't you so glad I didn't have, <laughs> have her read all of those as you sat there and go, oh my God, are they done yet? Oh my God. 
So I spared you. So that's one thing to be thankful for today already. Amen? You're welcome. <laughs> the writer goes back and forth between pleas of help mixed with expressions of trust. Trust as a foundation for hope in God's action, in God's faithfulness. There is this very familiar language here. The pleas of, for help are very much like our own when we're going through something. When we've gone through what we've gone through with Orlando. When you've gone through something and you've lost a job or you're going through a health scare like what Maggie said today and she got her PET scan that it was clear of cancer or whatever it may be that it's just something that you're going through. I like reading the Psalms because there's so much honesty in their writing if you haven't paid attention to that. They express their deep pleas of help from God. They ask difficult questions of God. They express their doubt. They express their pain. They express all the struggles that they're going through. They talk about their successes as well, but they also talk about their failures. There is nothing, nothing hidden or held back in their relationship with God. It's all out on the table between them and God because that's the relationship that they have. That's the relationship that we should have with God and also with one another. Amen? You also heard Maya recite her poem, Still I Rise only with the eloquence and nobleness that she can do herself because I refuse to read it when I have it where I can let her say what her own words. Her words are so powerful and it gives us all something to think about. And there are pieces in the poem that all of us at one time or another could relate to those words. Again, like the psalm writer and Maya, there is honesty and authenticity that comes across on every single level. And since I like to keep it real, <laughs> both work for me very, very well. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt. But still like dust, I rise. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge. And never let me be put to shame. In your righteousness, God, you deliver me, you rescue me. Incline your ear to save me. When you think about being written down in history and rising out of the dust, it makes me think about let us rise up and rebuild. Does it not? When you were trying to get into this building and everything was going wrong and you had mold and you didn't know if you'd have the money and you, with God's help, God's strength, God being your granite fortress, allowed you to rise up and rebuild. You didn't do it on your own. You all came together as a community of faith and you allowed yourselves to come together in the bond of love and peace and through giving of your financial resources and your time and your talents and you were able to rise. You have in your own history people who may have said, you're not going to rise up and rebuild. You're not going to have this ground. This is a cursed ground. And 
let's stop you out. But God had other plans, amen? You were able to rise up and rebuild. And here you are today in the very structure that God has given you to continue as you rise up and rebuild and to continue to do ministry in this place. Where does your hope come from? Amen. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge. Let me never to be put to shame. In your righteousness, God, deliver me, rescue me, incline your ear to save me. At that very moment when you rose up to rebuild, God indeed did save Suncoast Cathedral. Amen? Do you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes. Shoulders falling like teardrops. Weakened by soulful cries. There are going to be times in our lives, beloved, that People are going to want to see you broken. People are going to want to see your head bowed and have lowered eyes and tears just falling and being weakened by your soulful cries. Some of us may be there right now and in that very moment going through exactly that. Amen? Amen? The psalmist says this, be a rock of refuge to me, a strong fortress, a granite fortress. We love granite. I, I love quartz better, but a granite, you know, a, a quartz fortress, save me. For you are my rock and you are my fortress. Rescue me, O oh God from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and the cruel. When I think of those statements coming from Maya's poem and the psalmist, I think of what we went through in Orlando. That moment of seeing all of the events that happened and us coming together and the soulful cries of all, not only in Orlando, in our country, but all over the world, of people crying because of what happened. For those of us who put our trust in God and where does our hope come from, we can turn to God and say, be a rock to me. Be my refuge that when all of the things around me are crumbling and I'm in that moment where I'm crying and, sob and sobbing that I have a place that I can go in God, that I can find refuge, that I can find strength, that I can take that and allow God to wrap God's arms around me and give me strength and give me love that no one else can give me but God because my hope is in the Lord. If you don't know that kind of hope and that kind of trust, as the psalmist said, I have trusted in God since my very youth. I have leaned against God when I could not lean against no other. You are my fortress. You are my rock. And what about all of us, beloved. Is God your hope? Is God your strength? Do we take moments of pleasure when we see our brothers or sisters broken? That's a hard question to hear. Do we continue to allow our beloved brothers and sisters 
who we are connected to in the body of Christ, do we continue to allow people to walk with soulful cries and sobbing without putting our arm around them? Do we hand them a tissue to wipe the tears and look them in the eye and say, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what the hurt is. But I can tell you about someone that I know from my youth that you can place your trust in, that you can place your hope in, that people will disappoint you. Even sometimes your mom and your dad, your sister, your uncle, your partner, your husband, your wife can disappoint you. But God, God is where I place my trust and my hope. It is in God that I place my trust and my hope. Have I been angry with God when things have gone wrong? Absolutely. Absolutely. Have God and I had some conversations that only me and God had? Absolutely. I'm no different than the psalmist in 71 or any of the psalmist's writings that say, where are you? You're not supposed to leave me. You're supposed to be right here. Do we have those type of conversations when things go wrong? Absolutely we do. We're no different than when Jesus said, if it's your will, please take this cup from me but your will be done. For you, O oh Lord, you are my hope, my trust. I have leaned on you from my birth, and it was you who took me from my mother's womb, and my praise is continually on you and of you. I asked you a question at the beginning, where does the hope come from. If you were to ask me where the hope comes from, I would say that the hope comes from the Lord, that God has placed in each one of us from the moment that we were formed in our mother's wombs, the, the hope and the calling of what we were meant to be. And it doesn't matter what comes up against us. We have hope. We have hope, but it's not just fine to mentally assent that we have hope. We have to claim that we have hope. We have to stir up the gift of God that has been placed in us, that we have hope and we have to allow it to rise. God cannot do the work that we have been called to do alone. We have to come together so we can work with God that we all have to rise up. We have to rise up to all those who want to see us broken. We have to rise up to whoever those things that they want to see you fail. Even if the one that wants to see you fail is your own self. Sometimes we are our own worst critics and we listen to the tiny CD player, tiny violin, tiny record that continues to play that thing over and over and over that says you cannot rise up. Will we go through difficult things? Yes. Will we suffer some wrongs? Yes. Will we have frightening experiences? Yes. We must put our frightened experiences of our past, our present, and even those that may come in the future. We have to look optimistically towards the future and know that we have hope in God and we rise. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I rise. We rise. We rise. You got to talk today. 
we rise out of the history shame of people telling us that we can't be anything, you can't love God, you can't love who you love, and out of the huts and all of the history shame, we rise. Up from the past that's rooted in pain, we rise. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, we rise. Into the day breaks wondrously clear, we rise. Bringing all of the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave, I rise. Out of our histories, out of our histories of rising up and rebuilding again, we rise. Our hope is in the Lord, our strength is in God. And we shall, like air, rise. Amen.